Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And today is June the 2nd, 2023. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Pentecost. I thought today was Pentecost. It actually is Pentecost. But in this video, we're going to be talking about what specifically is Pentecost and why we shouldn't consider it just a one day celebration. Okay. It actually spans a few days. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video, what those days will consist of. Okay. The Pentecost is actually just the first day. Okay. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. First thing we want to do is look over here in Exodus chapter 34 and 22. If you would read that verse. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruit of wheat harvest and the feast of end gathering at the year's end. So this is talking about the festivals of our father right. and how they are mandatory. All right, let's look at Deuteronomy 16 and 10. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a free will offering of thy hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God has blessed thee. So we're talking about what is Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And this is what Pentecost is. The Feast of Weeks is a time that we must pay tribute mm -hmm. to our Father in the form of a free will offering. That's an offering where you give from your heart. Right. But notice right here where it says, give unto the Lord thy God. Right. And the way you do that is by giving to those in service of the temple, talking mm -hmm. about the priests and the Levites. Mm -hmm. So in other words, that's one of the reasons for this Feast of Weeks is so that we can all make this tribute and give unto the Lord. Right. So that's a very important thing. But now let's look at verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he has chosen. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Now, there are some beginners who may not be aware that the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Pentecost is the exact same, same feast. feast. But that's what we're talking about here. But notice how right here... It reiterates what we saw earlier saying you shall not appear before the Lord empty. Right. In other words, we have to make this tribute mm -hmm. that we read about earlier on Pentecost. That's what this is really all about. Giving us the opportunity to pay tithes, pay our tribute, make this free will offering. Well, these tithes and these tributes that um, the people would give until the Lord thy God, we know that the Lord... I would say personally doesn't need it, but when you give it to the priest, it is for the use of um, not just the temple, but for him taking care of his family and the things that he would have um, concerns for. Is that right? Absolutely. That's the way it's all supposed to work, where you have these priests, these Levites out here in service of the temple. And the way our father set it up, we are to give them our free will offerings so they can continue this temple service right not having to worry about food clothing and shelter right they can stay in the scripture teaching and telling us what we need to know so that we can participate in these many many gifts of these end times right but like we're going to learn in this video that's actually only one portion of this so-called feast of weeks okay like i said we're here on june the second which is 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, which was back on April the 14th. Mm -hmm. That was the date that we made the wave offering and started the Omar count. So 50 days later puts us exactly on June the 2nd, which is the day after the Sabbath day, just like the scripture says. Right. So June the 2nd is Pentecost. So if Pentecost is today, isn't the celebration already ongoing? Well, actually, no, because Pentecost is not the day to celebrate. It's the day to make the offering. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But let's come back to this. Let's jump over here to the book of Jubilees and look at a few passages. The first come in from chapter 15, when it's talking about Abraham celebrating the feast of weeks or the feast of first fruits, this grain harvest. Mm -hmm. But notice how it says here that 
he celebrated in the third month in the middle of the month. Right. Well, for us, the middle of the month is the 15th day of the month. So it was sometime around this day that he was celebrating. But Pentecost is way back here. Right. Well, let's look at another verse from chapter 44. This one is talking about Jacob or Israel. Mm -hmm. And it's given a little bit more specifics on the timing. You see how it says that he's in the third month. Right. The new moon of the third month. So that is the first day of the third month. So that's when he went to the well of the oath. And you see that on the seventh day of the month, he made a sacrifice. Right. So he went on the first day, which is the new moon, and he remained there until the seventh. Right. But then go on. You see down in verse three that he waited another seven days. So that would be seven plus seven, which is the 14th day of the month. And then you see in verse four, that is the day that he celebrated the festival of the first fruits or the feast of Pentecost. Right. So when we're looking back at our calendar, there is the 14th there on June the third. Right. But Pentecost is on June the second. Yes. The 50 days are over on June the second. Mm -hmm. So what's going on here? Yeah. Why did he continue to celebrate after the Pentecost? The answer is in what Pentecost truly is. Okay. Pentecost is not a high holy day in itself. Pentecost is a preparation day. Okay. You see right here in verse 17. It's talking about Pentecost. We started that back up in 15, but it's saying here in verse 17 that we are to bring out of our habitation two wave loaves of bread. Mm -hmm. And then you see in verse 18, along with this bread, we're supposed to have lambs of the first year right. and bulls of the first year and rams of the first year. We're supposed to bring out of our habitation. Mm -hmm. So in other words, on the morning of June the 2nd is when we're supposed to load up our carts full of our offering to make that trek all the way in to Jerusalem. So on, just as you said, June 2nd is the day that you make the tribute. That's the day you make the tribute, right? And you have to remember these people didn't live in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They lived out in the suburbs, so to speak. Some of them having to make an eight hour walk mm -hmm. to get to Jerusalem. So this would have been an all day trek carrying bulls, rams, bread, and other offerings that you would have all the way to the temple. Right. So there's no celebrating in this. Mm -hmm. That's all work. Right. That's sweat and toil as these people bring this offering. Now, it's not considered servile work. I mean, they're not down there working for Mr. Charlie, punching out widgets or mm -hmm. nothing. So it's not servile work. But it is loading up the carts full of this tribute as they carry it into Jerusalem to give to the priest on June the 2nd. Right. Now that's key because that's what Pentecost is. Many people don't know that. They think it's a holiday. They think it's a holy day. They think it's a day when we're supposed to, you know, do our praising and our worshiping and our singing and our relaxing and our eating. And no, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's a day when we got to go out there and rustle up them animals. We got to go out there and pack up our cart. And we got to feed and water our horses or our mules as we get ready to make this long trek with this stuff all the way into Jerusalem. That is what Pentecost is about. So after you make this trip into Jerusalem, it is then that same day that you would make your offering? Yeah, that's why you're bringing it. You're mm -hmm. bringing it just to give it to the priests and the Levites. Right. And... I feel the need to bring out this part back in Deuteronomy chapter 16, where it says, according as the Lord has blessed thee, because there's a few people who like to get in the comment section and tell me how they don't raise lambs or bulls or grow their own wheat. Therefore, they don't understand how or what they're supposed to use as their offering. Well, we see here is according as the Lord has blessed thee. So whatever he is blessing you with is what you're supposed to use as your offering. So Pentecost is not a holy day. It's a preparation day, just like Passover. Looking back up here for the first month, you see on the 13th day of the month was the communion Passover celebration. Right. 
that was in the evening hours when we had that communion, mm -hmm. starting the 14th day of the month. Right. Then on the 14th, we prepared that offering, that lamb. We roasted it all day long. Mm -hmm. And then at sundown on the 14th, which was the beginning of the 15th, we started eating that lamb in our celebration of unleavened bread, which was on the 15th. So the Passover is just a preparation day for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Absolutely. You got all of this work that has to be done. If you remember the Messiah's story, he had the disciples running around finding places to set up. They were slaughtering the, the lamb and all of this stuff happened on what we would have known as April the 4th. And then during the daylight hours, which would have been the day that they put the Messiah on the cross, is the day that you actually prepare the meal, doing all of the cooking, all of the cleaning, everything that has to be done is you invite your guests over who will partake in that meal at sunset for the high holy day, which is the 15th day of the month. So when they, when the Pharisees were rushing to get the Messiah on the cross and off the cross, it wasn't in anticipation for Passover. It was in anticipation for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. And because... The King James Version uses the word Passover and unleavened bread right. interchangeably. There's right. a little bit of confusion, absolutely. but you're absolutely right. It's a good point that the Messiah was hung on the cross on the 14th day. But as the evening approached and the Sabbath day approached, they and they were getting ready to shut the gates. They had to take the Messiah off and rush him into the tomb where he was buried. Right. But now when you're looking at Pentecost, it is the exact same way. Really? Well, yeah. Let's look at this calendar from the way we used to calculate the Sabbath days. Okay. The old style using the monthly calculation of our Father's really? sacred calendar. Okay. We've since learned that this is actually error. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to do it this way. And Pentecost is the celebration that proves it. The timing of Pentecost proves that this is not the scriptural method to calculate the Sabbath days. Okay. But we can use this in order to understand how Pentecost is similar, if not the same, as Passover. All right. So you have Pentecost on June the 2nd, mm -hmm. which we say is the day that we will make the long trek into Jerusalem with our stuff. Right. We will make the offerings to the priests. But they won't start sacrificing those animals until the evening between the twilight hours mm -hmm. on June the 2nd. Right. Then on the next day, June the 3rd, is when the preparation takes place where these animals will be roasted. Mm -hmm. All of the preparation is made for the high holy day, which will start on the evening of June the 3rd and will be through the daylight hours of June the 4th. Which will be the 15th day of the month. Right. And so this is why I had so much confidence in that monthly way of calculating the Sabbath days is because the Pentecost celebration part, you remember the verse back in Jubilees chapter 15 that Abraham celebrated in the middle of the month. Right. And Jacob did his celebration about the middle of the month, the 14th or the 15th of the month. So what's going on here is you have this preparation as they get ready to have this celebration on the evening of June the 3rd. Mm -hmm. So the Pentecost celebration is actually the 15th day of the month. Okay. Pentecost is June the 2nd. But again, that's like Passover. Mm -hmm. The high holy day is the 15th day of the month, which will be around June the 4th. Okay. But don't get confused because somebody's going to tell you that Pentecost is June the 4th. is not. Mm -hmm. It was June the 2nd. Right. But... This celebration takes place around June the 4th. And then you see here on June the 5th, I have Covenant Day. Right. Well, that corresponds to the 16th day of the month when the Lord appeared unto Jacob. Yes. So he had a visitation. Okay. Talking about the 16th day of the month. Okay. And if you guys are still having trouble understanding the sacred calendar, let me offer you guys our celestial calendar. This training aid will actually help you to understand how our Father's sacred calendar works. It appears to be a regular clock, but it's not. It's actually two clock movements put together that changes it into a calendar instead of just a clock. In other words, that second hand is telling me that it's almost 12 o'clock. Well, 
that minute hand is telling me that we're almost at the time appointed or the new moon. And the hour hand is telling me that we are around the feast of weeks. So just like Genesis chapter one and verse 14 says with the sun, the moon and the stars representing our father's sacred calendar, we see here that the appointed time of the Pentecost celebration is rapidly approaching. You can get one of these clocks over at coachingthefight.shop or follow the links below in the description of this video. So there you have it. Pentecost is June the 2nd, but that's only the beginning of the celebration. Mm. Key point that it is a vital part of the celebration because we have to make this offering. Right. I'm glad you guys made it this far in the video because this offering, I believe, opens up a doorway that allows us to receive these other blessings. In other words, if we don't make this offering back here on June the 2nd, we may miss out on the other benefits that occur on or about June the 5th. It's sort of like the father, um, you know, you say that the word if is one of the biggest words in scripture. It's sort of like he allows to, he waits to see if you're going to be obedient to the tribute and then he makes that appearance or he sends the blessing. Yeah, absolutely. And I wasn't going to talk about it, but I can give a little bit about my testimony in this year where when I understood how important this offering is, I actually did my offering early this year. We're given 50 days. Well, mm -hmm. the way I understand it, we don't have to wait 50 days. So I made my free will offering back here in the early parts of April. Right. And I must say, I've talked about it in another video, how it was a life changing experience how a lot of things in my life started to change and go a different way. And I believe it was based on this offering. Right. And so that's why I wanted to stress this, how important this Pentecost offering is. Mm -hmm. That's what it's really all about is actually twofold in nature. One is all about the covenant. And it reminds me, I need to do another class to talk about that, how Pentecost is the covenant holy day. Each one of the holy days, we get a different blessing like Passover. We get remission of our sins, mm -hmm. unleavened bread. We get the mark of our father placed on our heart. Right. And tabernacles is the day we get our release or our freedoms. Well, Pentecost is the day that the covenant is supposed to be placed on our heart. Right. So it is a twofold holy day, one for the covenant. But first, we must make this offering. That's right. important. Right. So to sum it all up, when is Pentecost? It starts on June the 2nd and the whole festival spans at least until June the 5th, which many who will be properly prepared will receive some type of visitation on June the 5th. And for me, as a part of my testimony, the way it happened for me back in 2015 when I experienced this, the way it materialized is as an overwhelming desire to understand the covenant. Mm -hmm. I simply wanted to read and understand the covenant, which I've learned since is Exodus chapter 20. That's the 10 commandments. That starts with the 10 commandments, but it's actually four chapters. It's chapter 20, chapter 21, chapter 22, and chapter 23 makes up what we know as the book of the covenant. And so this will be a good holy day in order to familiarize ourselves with that contract because that is the life or death situation because that's what we will have to understand if we plan on surviving this tribulation right we have to know how to live according to those rules else we're going to have to deal with these plagues and stuff that's coming during the apocalypse right well guys i hope you got something out of this video if you did hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button but leave us a comment either way especially if you have any questions or anything mm -hmm. and we'll see you down there See you in the next video. Shalom.